Grab your pitchforks, boys. We're going to war. Or are we? Well, they finally did it. For the first time in gaming history, they created mods that change a character's sexuality. And I'm here to find out if we should grab our pitchforks, take to the metaphorical streets of Twitter and just burn it all to the ground. Or if maybe, just maybe, using these mods is each player's individual choice and doesn't affect our own personal gaming experience. And therefore it's, you know, none of our business. So just to get everyone up to speed first. In Cyberpunk, it is possible to enter a romantic relationship with certain NPCs. And these NPCs have preferences of their own. So some will only be romanceable by a character with male features and others only by a character with female features. And one of these characters is Judy, this gal here. She is only romanceable by female characters, or should I say was, because very recently a mod was released allowing male characters to enter a romantic relationship with her as well. Needless to say, some snowflakes on Twitter were very upset. Fuming, one might say. Propping at the mouth, really. Because according to them, this is absolutely unacceptable, since it goes against the writer's original vision. And I think it's important to make a distinction here. Now, I am with you all the way if you're gonna say a writer should not be forced to alter their original vision to fit the demands of a subset of the player base. A character will react differently to certain situations depending on their sexuality. If a writer has created a gay character and you force them to make this character bisexual so all players can romance them, they will have to compromise on their original vision under certain circumstances. That's not good. Writers should be able to bring the characters and story to life that they envisioned. But once that game is done, it's out, it's in the consumer's hands, let them do whatever they want with it. If some modder decides to take time out of their day to create a mod that alters a character's sexuality and a player decides to use up their spare time to install this mod, then let them. It doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect your experience. They didn't force the developers to create this mod. This didn't use up any of the game's development time. Yeah, they don't get the originally intended experience, but guess what? People using these mods are aware of that. They made the conscious decision to go for an altered, some might say a modded, experience. Mods that make characters gay, straight or bi have been created for Dragon Age, Mass Effect, even Persona 4 and a lot of other games, and they are a good thing. They give the consumer more options and ways to alter their experience. What's next? I can't have weapon and enemy randomizers in Dark Souls because it goes against the original vision? Ugh, you can't fight Ornstein in Sen's Fortress, that's not how it was intended. Fuck you, I'll fight Ornstein wherever I want. People should be allowed to experience their single player games however they want to experience them. Imagine somebody coming home from a long day at work and just wanting to sit down, play games and relax. But not everybody wants to play Animal Crossing to relax. Some people relax playing Dark Souls. And maybe it's not the challenging combat that they enjoy, but the rich atmosphere or trying to make sense of the lore. If somebody doesn't want to put in the time to get good at Dark Souls, does that mean they should not be able to experience it? It links back to the debate about every game having a super easy journalist mode a while back. And do I think every game should have a super easy casual mode? No. Oh, but you just said everybody should be able to experience the game however they want. Yes, as long as these adjustments for a small part of the player base don't make the product worse for everybody. Creating a separate, super easy difficulty mode takes time away from development that could be spent elsewhere. 
That's why I think games don't need a super easy mode. They don't need to have cheat codes. Usually, if somebody doesn't want to put in the time necessary to get good at a game, they are shit out of luck. And development time shouldn't be spent catering to that minority of the player base. But if an independent modder decides to create a mod that makes you invincible, or if the developer console and commands that have been used for testing anyways are available to the player, then great! Sure, to you the combat in Dark Souls might be the most fun part, and you don't understand why somebody would even play the game if they're gonna skip the best thing about it. But somebody else might enjoy different aspects, and if they decide to ignore the part that seems best to you, then that is fine. Same principle applies to the mods mentioned at the start. You might enjoy having characters with fixed sexual preferences, but if modders allow players to change that aspect of the game, then that is fine. If somebody alters their single player experience in that way, it doesn't affect me and my enjoyment of the game. So if you are offended by a mod that changes a character's sexuality, then I'm sorry to say this, but then you are an idiot. What other people do in their single player games does not affect me. It does not affect you. So long as it's contained to their own single player experience, it's none of our business. And that's it. Hooray to mods, hooray to cheat codes, as long as they don't affect the game's development. I'll see you next time.